Hello friends and welcome to Storytime. My name is Miss Maureen and why don't we sing our hello song before we get started today. When we sing hello we will salute and when we sing friends we will take our two fingers and we'll have them give each other a hug. Hello friends, hello friends, hello friends, it's time to say hello. Good job guys. Today we are talking about mindfulness again. Do you remember what letter mindfulness starts with? M mindfulness. Mindfulness starts with the letter M. M is for mindfulness. Can you write the letter M in the air using your finger? M for mindfulness. Last week we talked about how mindfulness can help you lead a healthier and happier life. But did you know it can also help you be a better friend to everyone? Practicing mindfulness can help you to become a better listener and a better observer, and it can help you to be more focused on the moment so that you can be more present with all the people around you. Let's learn some American Sign Language. We're going to learn the signs for some words about some of the things that we're going to talk about in our books today. Our first sign is the word lonely. Do you know what letter lonely starts with? L, lonely. Yes, lonely starts with the letter L. L for lonely. L. To sign the word lonely, take your index finger on your dominant hand, so the one that you use to eat or to draw or to write, and hold it in front of your mouth. And then we're going to move it down and forward and back in a circle. And we'll do that two times for lonely. And remember last week we talked about with American Sign Language, your body language and your facial expressions are very important. So how do you feel when you feel lonely? Kind of sad, right? So try to show lonely in your face when you sign the word. Good job. Let's learn how to sign the word feelings. Because we've been talking about a lot of feelings. And we're going to discuss our different feelings today a little bit more too. What letter does feeling start with? F feeling. Yes, feeling starts with the letter F. F is for feeling. F. To sign the word feeling, take your dominant hand and bend your middle finger at the big knuckle. Just like this. And to say feel, you brush up on your chest. And that can mean feeling as well but you can also do one, two to say feelings. Good job. Let's learn one more word. Let's learn listen. Listening is very important for your mindfulness and just being a good friend in general. And we're gonna read a lot of books about listening today. What letter does listen start with? It makes a l sound. L listen. Yes, listen starts with the letter L, just like lonely. L. To sign the word listen, take your dominant hand and cup it behind your ear. Good job! Now you guys have some sign words to talk about your feelings, maybe if you're feeling lonely and you want someone to listen. Before we go into our first book, why don't we sing our alphabet together? 
you can pat along at home, or you can just sing, you can just listen, or you can try to sign along with me. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. Now I know my A, B, C's. Next time, won't you sing with me? Good job, friends. Our first book today is called Blackout by John Rocco. It's a story about a family that's really, really busy. They're too busy to hang out with each other or to really even notice what's going on around them. But then all the lights go out. And that sounds like it could be a bad thing, but for this family, it turns out to be a very good thing because they actually end up getting to be more mindful of their space and of each other, and they have a great night. Blackout. It started out as a normal summer night. The city was loud and hot. And then he said, tap, 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 shake, 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 shake. Inside, everyone was busy. Much, sorry, too, busy. And then, the lights went out, all of them. Nothing worked at all. The city was dark and quiet and still. We huddled around flashlights and candles until it was too hot and sticky to sit inside. Can we go? So we went up and up and up to the rooftop and found the light. It was a block party in the sky. We waved to everyone, then heard other sounds below. So we went down and down and down to the street. Come on! party was going on there too. Free. Yippee! La 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 la. And no one was busy at all. 
when the lights came back on, everything went back to normal. Hmm. Click. But not everyone likes normal. I gotta go. Good idea, buddy. The end. Why don't we start off our exercises with the yoga flow that we learned last week? So if you wanna join me either on the floor or on your bed. Okay, so we're gonna start off on our backs. So if you want to go ahead and lie down on the floor or on a bed, on the couch. There we go. And let's start by pulling our knees into our chest. Go ahead and hug them there. And you can kind of rock gently back and forth, rock your knees gently back and forth. And let's bring them back to the center and take a breath here in and out. Good job. And from here, we will keep our knees bent, but let go of them, and we'll grab onto our toes with our fingers here. And we're in happy baby. You can move your feet around, wiggle them out a little bit. And let's take a breath here, in and out. Good job. And now we'll release our toes and hold our legs straight up. And remember, you can use a wall if this is difficult for you. But we're not going to stay here long. We're just going to take a breath in and let it go. And then our last pose, bring your legs all the way down and just lay there, however is comfortable for you. This is our starfish. And take a breath here, in and out. And now you can stay here for the next imagination exercise if you'd like, or you can join me back in a sitting position. You can stay in your starfish pose or you can join me in sitting again. We're going to do another imagination exercise that is a little different than last week's. This one is called the love balloon. So I'm going to ask you to just close your eyes and listen to my voice and imagine the story that I'm telling you. Imagine that you're there. The love balloon. Imagine you have the biggest balloon in the world. It can be any color you'd like. Now imagine that you want to give this balloon to someone you love. Take a deep breath in. Now blow out, imagining that you are filling the balloon with love. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. Keep breathing in and out, filling up your balloon. Tie a string around the bottom when it is full. Hold on to the string and feel this giant balloon lift you from the ground. The balloon is so big that it can fly you anywhere in the world. Imagine that the balloon carries you to this person that you love. Give the balloon to them and feel how happy they are to receive this gift of love. Do you ever 
remember talking about the five senses last week? Let's review them and we'll use them as an exercise to help us focus for our next story. So, let's start with sight. What are five things that you see right now? You can say them out loud or you can hold them in your mind and just think about them. Just notice them. I'm going to count five things that I see while you look around and look at five things that you see. I see the books on the shelves. I see the trees outside. I see the letter M for mindfulness. I see you right there. And I see a big ship on the top of the bookcase. That's five things that I see. How about we focus on what we feel? What are four things that you feel right now? Hmm. I feel my hands against each other. I feel the fabric of my shirt on my skin, it's two things. I feel the chair underneath my bum and I can feel my shoes with my toes. Those are four things that I feel. Now let's focus on our hearing. What are three things that you can hear? Three things. Mm. I hear a faucet dripping in the distance. I hear the hum of the fan. I hear car driving by outside. What are three things that you hear? Listen close. Hmm. Let's focus on our sense of smell. What are two things that you can smell right now? Hmm. I smell my shampoo in my hair. I smell someone's lunch from the kitchen. What are two things that you smell? We have one more sense. Let's focus on what we taste right now. What is one thing that you taste? Maybe you are eating a snack right now and you taste that. Maybe you take a sip of water. Maybe you just mm, notice the taste inside your mouth. Does it taste like toothpaste? Or maybe it tastes like something that you ate earlier. Maybe you can Breathe in some air. See what you taste on the air. What's one thing that you taste right now? Good job, guys. Now that we are focused, let's go into our next book. This one is called The Rabbit Listened by Corey Dorfield. The little friend in this book has a lot of feelings when something sad happens to him but he doesn't really know how to express them until his friend, the rabbit, comes along and listens. Listening is a great tool to practice because it can help you be a really good friend. Sometimes that's all someone needs, it's just somebody to listen. The rabbit listened.
The rabbit listened. One day, Taylor decided to build something. Something new. Something special. Something amazing. Taylor was so proud. But then out of nowhere, things came crashing down. The chicken was the first to notice. Clunk, clunk, what a shame. I'm sorry, 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 this happened. Let's talk, talk, talk about it. Cluck, cluck. But Taylor didn't feel like talking. So the chicken left. Next came the bear. Grrr, rawr, how horrible. I bet you feel so angry. Let's shout about it. Grrr, rawr, grrr. But Taylor didn't feel like shouting. So the bear left. The elephant knew just what to do. trump da I can fix this. We just need to remember exactly the way things were. But Taylor didn't feel like remembering. So the elephant also left. One by one they came. The hyena, <laughs> let's laugh about it. The ostrich, Oop. let's hide and pretend nothing happened. The kangaroo, tisk tisk, what a mess. Let's throw it all away. And the snake, shh, let's go knock down someone else's. But Taylor didn't feel like doing anything with anybody. So eventually they all left until Taylor was all alone. In the quiet, Taylor didn't even notice the rabbit, but it moved closer and closer until Taylor could feel its warm body. Together they sat in silence until Taylor said, please stay with me. The rabbit listened. The rabbit listened as Taylor talked. The rabbit listened as Taylor shouted. The rabbit listened as Taylor remembered and laughed. The rabbit listened to Taylor's plans to hide, to throw everything away, to ruin things for someone else. Through it all, the rabbit never left. And when the time was right, the rabbit listened to Taylor's plan to build again. I can't wait, Taylor said. It's going to be amazing. The end. Taylor in that book felt a lot of different emotions when their tower was knocked down. Learning to recognize emotions in yourself and in others can help you practice mindfulness and can help you just be a better friend. So let's see if we can recognize some of these emotions. What is this face, do you think? What do you think this face is feeling? Hmm. You can try to move your face into that expression and maybe it'll help you understand the feeling a little better. I think it's an angry face. Can you make your best angry face? Good job. What are some things that make you angry? You don't have to say them out loud. Just think about it. How do you feel when you feel angry?
angry? Why do we get angry? Hmm. Something that makes me angry is when I really want something, but I can't have it. Maybe there aren't any more left, or it just doesn't belong to me. And you know what really helps when you're feeling angry is breathing. Always remember your magic breath. face feeling. Hmm. Looks like I think it's a sad face. Can you make a sad face? What makes you feel sad? You don't have to say it out loud, but just think about it. Think about something that makes you sad and how that makes you feel. Something that makes me sad is when someone says something mean to me. I don't like feeling that way. But you know what helps? Having a friend who listens. And if you can't find anyone to listen, magic breath. What do we think this face is? <sighs> I think it's a scared face. Can you make your best scared face? <gasps> What's something that makes you scared? Mm. You don't have to say it out loud. Just think about it. Something that scares me are spiders. It's not fun being scared and sometimes you're scared for a reason. You're just being safe. But sometimes, maybe you don't know why you're scared. It doesn't make any sense to you. You're just feeling a little anxious. You know what can really help? Your magic breath. What is this face? Maybe surprised? Make a surprised face. You can feel surprised sometimes when you're scared, something jumps out at you, but surprise can also be really good. You can be surprised by a gift you weren't expecting or a visitor that you didn't know was gonna come by surprises can be great. What's something that has surprised you before? Can you think of something? It can be something so tiny. Something that surprised me before is when my friend threw me a surprise birthday party. At first I was a little scared because I didn't expect to see them, but then my surprise was a really good surprise. Sometimes even surprise, even when it's good, can feel a little overwhelming. If you ever need to take a break, you can just use your magic breath. It'll help you come back down. What's this last face? Do you know what this face is? I think it's a happy face. Can you make your biggest happy face? Being happy is great. We all love it. What's something that made you happy today? And if you're just waking up, then what's something that made you happy yesterday? Can you think of anything? Something that made me really happy was when my cat crawled into bed with me this morning. She's such a good snuggler. Even when we're feeling happy, we can use our magic breath because it can help ground you and it can help you focus better on what is making you so happy and really be present with that happiness in the moment. Let's do one more magic breath. Good job, guys. Let's do a quick little energy exercise. And again, this is from the book, Breathe Like a Bear by Kira Willey. 
This exercise is called wake up your face. So get ready to wake up your face. So open your eyes wide and blink them three times. One, two, three. Can you wiggle your eyebrows up and down? Best you can. Can you wiggle your nose like a little bunny? I can't really. How about open up your mouth and move your jaw back and forth. Can you stick out your tongue as far as it will go? Can you make a fishy face? Can you wiggle your whole head around? Wiggle your head. Good job, and now hold your body still. Take a big deep breath in, and let it all out. Good job, guys. And now that we are nice and energized, we are going to sing our song again. We're gonna sing If You're Happy and You Know It. It's one of my favorites. I know we sang it last week, but I feel like it's a really good song for mindfulness. So let's start with clapping. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it and you really wanna show it, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Great job. Let's do stomp our feet. Now I'm gonna stay in my seat, but if you wanna stand up to stomp, go for it. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it and you really want to show it. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. Awesome. Now can we shout hooray? If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray. Hooray! If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray. Hooray! If you're happy and you know it and you really want to show it, if you're happy and you know it, shout hooray. Hooray! Can we do all three? Let's clap, stomp, hooray! If you're happy and you know it, do all three. Hooray! If you're happy and you know it, do all three. If you're happy and you know it and you really want to show it, if you're happy and you know it, do all three. Hooray! Good job, guys. We have one more book. This one is called The Lemonade Hurricane. It's a story of mindfulness and meditation. It's by Alicia Morelli. It's a story about a brother and a sister. And the brother... He gets a little wild sometimes. He has a lot of energy, but he doesn't really know what to do with it. So his sister decides she's going to teach him to be mindful and calm so that he can help channel his energy. The Lemonade Hurricane. The Lemonade Hurricane. My name is Emma. My days are busy and full. Sometimes I like to stop and rest. This is Henry. Henry likes to run, wrestle, roar, and drink lemonade. I call him the Lemonade Hurricane. Henry's days are busy and full. Sometimes too busy and too full. And then Henry gets wild. Ouch. When Henry gets like this, I try to stay out of the way. Jump, whack, kick. But it doesn't always work. Hmm. I crumbled her castle, just like in our last book.
I really don't like hurricanes. I wish Henry could calm down sometimes. I wish I could show him how. Then we could play together. Henry's fun when he's got a hurricane. Maybe I can show Henry how to be still. The next day, whoa. Watch this, I say. Sit, bow, breathe, breathe. When I sit, I can feel the ground beneath me. I can hear the birds chirping. I can smell the grass. When I bow, I pretend I am on top of a mountain. I can see for miles and miles. And when I breathe, I pretend I'm the wind moving the leaves and the trees. I can do it too, says Henry. Henry pretends he is on top of an elephant and has to bow really slowly so he does not fall off. Look, listen, feel, breathe. I take deep breaths. Henry takes deep breaths. We look, listen, feel, and smell. The lemonade hurricane is gone. The end. Before we sing our goodbye song, I have one more activity to just help us relax and come back down. It's the same one we did last week. We're going to get all of our grumpies out. Can you start by making a really grumpy face? Let me see your grumpy faces. The grumpiest you can make it. Or maybe you feel a little sad or a little angry today. If you do, go ahead and make a sad face or an angry face instead of a grumpy one. Now, whatever face you're making, go ahead and take a deep breath in and blow the grumpies or the sad or the anger away. Good job. Let's do it one more time, just in case there's a little bit of grumpy, a little bit of sad, a little bit of angry still in there. All right, so a big, big breath. And blow it all away. Sit really tall. Maybe you have a little bit of a smile now. Go ahead and take one more breath in and let it all out. Good job, guys. Thank you so much for coming to Storytime today. I hope that you had a great time. I hope that you're feeling better if you weren't feeling great before. I know I am definitely feeling a lot better than I was when we started. I do have a at-home activity for you to do after this, so stick around after our goodbye song if you're interested in an activity. If you would like to learn some more about the Zoom story times, you can email me at the email listed below. Please find our websites, our Facebook, our Instagram, and follow us, like us there, so you can be the first to know about everything going on. Why don't we sing our goodbye song? We are going to wave and we're going to clap. We wave goodbye like this. We wave goodbye like this. We clap our hands for all our friends and wave goodbye like this. Goodbye, friends. This week we are making a feelings plate. This can be useful to help you or a friend express how you are feeling or to talk about a specific emotion that you want help understanding. 
For this activity, you'll need two paper plates, scissors, a pencil, something to decorate with, like markers, crayons, or paint, and something to connect your plates with. I used a pipe cleaner, but you might use a twisty from a bread bag, a fastener pin, or even string. First, you're going to want to flatten your paper plates to make sure that they spin well against each other. Next, you'll want to trace a circle on one of your paper plates. I used a cup to trace a circle, but you can freehand it if you don't have a cup handy. Next, cut out your circle. Next, you'll want to line up your paper plates and use your pre-cut circle to trace more circles on your other paper plate. Each of these circles will represent a different emotion. Use a pencil to poke a hole into the center of your top plate. Then line that one up with your bottom plate and mark the center in that plate as well. Once you have that center marked, you can poke a hole in that one too. Now it's time to decorate both your plates. On your bottom plate with multiple circles, you want to draw different emotions. Draw them how you perceive them. What does happy look like to you? What does sad look like to you? How about angry or surprised or scared or nervous? On your top plate, decorate it however you want. Get creative. Write your name, add some color, however you want it to look. Now we want to fasten the two plates together. If you're using a pipe cleaner, cut it down to just a couple of inches and insert it into the two circles so the plates are stacked onto each other. And then twist the ends so that the plates stay fastened together. 